so let's begin. Um, uh, this presentation is the result of uh, my experience that uh, I gained it during working with uh, several projects uh, that use different IOC uh, containers, DI frameworks, and <clears throat> also they were, there were projects without uh, DI and uh, uh, also I introduced DI to several ones. So uh, after that, I collected all the information and uh, decided that uh, it would be cool to share it, it with other people. Also, I, will, I would be glad to hear some feedback, maybe some, uh, maybe your story about DI because this topic is really, really broad and everyone can add something to, to this. <clears throat> Uh, so, um, okay, uh, we will talk about uh, DI advantages and disadvantages in general. Also, we will review uh, some problems uh, and uh, like typical problem, problems on some real uh, project example. I will show you uh, bad code that should that should be it should be refactored. Also. We will review uh, which DI options are available for our case. And then we will refactor the code. Uh, also, there will be some benchmarks, some uh, results. And uh, then th there will be summary. Uh, does it make sense to, to introduce DI in, in our case? <clears throat> Few words about me. Uh, so, uh, mainly I was working on Rails and Spring, as probably most of you guys here. And uh, there, in this world, DI is given by default, but also I had the chance to work with different, like other technologies, uh, for example, Android project, where I introduced dependency injection. Also, I work it, and uh, this project is actually in progress. I'm working on the a game dev project, uh, also there are projects without DI. Uh, so it was a servlet application without DI and the latest one, uh, Vertex-based project uh, with microservices architecture. <clears throat> so um, what advantages of using DI in general? Uh, I think most of the information uh, actually is uh, very uh, familiar for you, but let's uh, recall it again. So in general, uh, for, I would say the main advantage is clean code. And what is clean code? So uh, we have more readable and more uh, maintainable code, right? And those components are easier to reuse. Uh, I will show you some examples later and you will see it. Also, because uh, we are focusing on a single responsibility principle, unit testing is easier with uh, DI. Uh, and uh, we can switch implementation also uh, because if we, are, uh, depend, if we depend on abstractions, it, it will be easier to, to provide different implementation for some dependency later or, or dynamically. <clears throat> also, we uh, automatically are following good uh, design print principles uh, and you know about them single responsibility loose coupling dependency inversion and uh, even uh, even more but there are disadvantages right uh, by using a lot of abstractions we can increase a number of our classes in in, in our project uh, so code base could grow and uh, also because uh, usually the i framework is doing some hard job and uh, it, it, this could affect startup performance and maybe even uh, your running application performance so it could be overheaded if your uh, application is uh, not not uh, big and uh, the other disadvantage, uh, we are coupling, uh, we are coupling to some dependency injection framework because we use some uh, framework specific code, and if we decide in future to switch to other one or remove it, it could be problematical. Um, okay, 
The main question uh, that we will try to answer in uh, this presentation, <clears throat> do we need DI at all? And for most of us as uh, Spring developers, it could be really weird to, to see this question because you know, Spring was uh, started as a IOC container, right? And after that, uh, a lot of features were added and it uh, uh, grown uh, into something big and uh, modular like we see it now. Uh, it is de facto standard of uh, building complex enterprise applications, but uh, its core uh, module includes uh, the DI by default. So. <clears throat> we can think that, okay, when, uh, Spring developers decided to put it uh, as a default option, right? So probably DI is a cool feature and everyone should use it, right? Why even bother? So, uh, but when we, uh, when we talk about microservices, this question becomes more reasonable, right? Because when you use microservice architecture, you, you would like to have your uh, microservice as smallest as possible, right? And uh, you probably want it to be super fast because your application will be scaled, uh, some services will be restarted and you would like to, to have this restart as quick as possible. So it, it matters for you. <clears throat> also, uh, you want to uh, like a quick startup and uh, small uh, RAM, uh, like your application should uh, consume small RAM. So, uh, now this question becomes more reasonable. Um, and also, um, there are even frameworks that uh, actually doesn't have uh, DI by default, for example, Vertex framework. So you don't have DI, you, if you need it, you can add some uh, plugins, some extensions, but uh, I think it's a bad idea to add DI just because it's cool, just because Spring uses it, right? You should probably investigate a little bit and uh, spot some problems if you have such problems in your project and then you should decide, uh, can DI solve those projects for your specific project, uh, right? And from my experience, some um, typical uh, project, uh, uh, some typical uh, issues in your code when you are not using dependency injection. Uh, the, the most popular is a lot of singletons, right? Because when you need some dependency and it is a little bit like hard to recreate every time you would like to have only one instance, the perfect example is pool. You want to have one, one pool per application and what you do you just create a simple tone and use it everywhere, right? Everything is simple, cool, it works. So everything is fine. When you uh, have not such a complex uh, dependency, you can create it by yourself. So you have service A and you need to call service B. You just create service B inside your service A, right? You assign uh, some, you create some private member, assign it, and that's it. Everything is fine. But you, you can decide that, okay, creating dependencies by itself, it maybe it uh, violates single responsibility principle. Let's uh, create uh, like constructor, constructor in, uh, instead or uh, create some setters. Uh, but then mm, we have a lot of boilerplate code, like you should create this graph and if uh, your graph is, is complex, somewhere at the high level, you should uh, instantiate everything and uh, you know, this is a lot of code. And the last uh, item is specific to Vertex. Uh, when you uh, use Vertex, you have such concept uh, like vertical. Vertical is like sub application, like small part of application that is deployable by itself. You can scale it. So you want to have this vertical uh, isolated from other verticals, right? And I will show you in, in example. So when you use something like shared, for example, pool, you can have uh, problems in the future. So we will discuss it more later. But uh, uh, you will see some vertex example, but still, uh, 
uh, general information about DI is uh, applicable for any other frameworks. So we are not talking only uh, about Vertex or about uh, uh, Micronaut. This is only like example of usage. Um, I've created test project. Uh, very simple one. Uh, it stores customers in database, and you have an endpoint, uh, REST endpoint. You can return all the all uh, customers, and there are three verticals. Uh, one is responsible for uh, REST API. The other one uh, produces customers, and the third one uh, just notifies every customer from the database, and sends some notification. And we have a service responsible for working with customers and repositories. So just a simple, simple project. And uh, I can quickly show you this project just to, to have a quick overview and understand it better. Okay, so what do we have here? Let's close this. Let's start from the beginning. We have two verticals. Uh, vertical is just like starting point. If you, if you know nothing about uh, vertex, just ignore it. This is like three, three starting points of your application. The one is responsible for the REST API. And you see here we need customer service, right? And what do we do? We just create it. We need a connection. So we get in our pool from some, some pool manager, right? And we use this pool, we, we are getting connection. This is asynchronous code, don't be scared. Uh, so we use customer service, get customers method, and it requires connection. So here is our uh, asynchronous result. It is just a connection. So we pass, pass connection here. And uh, the similar example is like, this is the second vertical. We need customer service and we, uh, we are adding customer. And of course we need to pass this connection to it. And the third one, uh, we also have, we have customer service, but we also have notifier. And we are designing that we, we need email notifier, right? We hard coded our implementation here, and as well, we are uh, calling get customers with our connection object. And quick overview of a service the service is really simple, it uses customer repository here and just uh, delegates everything to customer repository and passes connection as well. So, we see this chain of passing connection to the like customer repository. Also, we have, what do we have? We have a repository here. It uses connection, yeah, and it just query it. Okay, and notifier, this is an interface and it has uh, uh, two implementation, email notifier, right, and SMS notifier. Cool. So let's go back to our presentation and uh, let's review probably uh, you have already spot some uh, like problems with this um, with this project and let's just review all of them closer so uh, first of all you well, uh, this code violates solid principle because our vertical is not only responsible for some business logic uh, but it is responsible for creating uh, its dependencies right it means that unit testing is harder. We will talk about this a little bit later. And um, we see that customer notifier even goes further. It decides which implementation it needs. So if you will have a lot of those uh, hard-coded values, right, to switch everything, you should go into every class and refactor it, you know, it is not so flexible. Um, Another issue is singletons, as I've already mentioned. Uh, you see, we have this pool. I don't know if you see my cursor. Probably not, right? Oh, can see. We see. Yeah. You see it, right? Yes. Oh, cool. Okay. Okay. Um, so 
we are creating pool from our singleton, right, or our uh, static uh, utility class with static method. And this code is even harder to test, right? Because how do you mock this one? You should, you should use some superpower to mock this. But of course, there is a solution for this. You can use power mock, right? You can, you can uh, mock everything with power mock, but uh, okay, we, have, we still have other issues and power mock is like just hiding the real problem from you. You can use it, but if you are using it for a legacy project, that's fine because you cannot change legacy project. But if you are creating a new code and you need power mock, something is wrong, actually. So um, your code is not reusable because you uh, are coupled to this, uh, to this uh, class. And even going further, uh, you can uh, still have some issues with your frameworks. For example, I had issue with Vertex plus Power Mock plus JUnit 5 because I don't know, they, do, do, they don't work well together. So you can uh, spend more time for testing, more than you expected for just looking for some wor workarounds. And you have no vertical isolation, as I've uh, already mentioned. Uh, this pool is shared between, uh, between all the verticals. And we have three verticals, like we are not isolating them. They are, con they are connected with this pool. And if, it not, if it's not thread safe, we, we can have some uh, issues with this. So this is vertex specific issue, actually. Uh, and uh, we... Um, even if we use everything like properly, we are not creating dependencies by itself. We are providing them from outside. We still need to write some uh, some routine code, right? We have this connection here. We should pass it every time. We should get it. So that's not that's not okay. That's not a developer friendly way of doing this. Even if even if this this is correct way, right? So we decided that, okay, we need DI. DI will solve everything for us, right? But we should investigate it a little bit. And we have uh, several options uh, for DI. There are a lot of others, but I chose some, some several ones, uh, like maybe the most popular, the most acceptable for us. So Vault is um, from enterprise world. It is a little bit over, I would say over, complicated overhead for, for microservice. So probably it's not an option for us. Spring uh, is fine, but it is a little bit, I would say big and uh, it uses reflection. What does it mean? When you start your project, Spring will uh, start creating dependency tree with all your dependencies. And it uses reflection to scan your code, to scan your annotation and create this dependency tree. And this takes some time. So you don't want to spend some time when you start your microservice application. Uh, Google Juice as well uses reflection. It is lightweight, very cool, small uh, library, but it also uses a, a reflection. So you will hit your startup performance as well and probably your RAM consumption at the, at the beginning. So uh, we have Dagger too. Uh, this uh, library is like very interesting one because uh, it started using compile time dependency resolution. So uh, instead of uh, resolve everything at application start, it just uh, generates some code during uh, your uh, compilation, right? And then it have everything. It has everything pre-compiled. So during the start, you don't need to wire everything. It, it is very, very important for for Android. And actually, this is library used in Android world because you don't want a user user don't want to spend some time to, to like to see uh, application loading, right? But uh, even if you can use it with Java, it is mostly for Android, and it looks. For me, it looked a little bit overcomplicated. Uh, as a as a Spring developer, you you can see it a little bit weird to start with. And uh, the the winner here uh, for our case is Micronaut DI or Micronaut Inject. So let's talk about this a little bit uh, more. Uh, Micronaut Inject is a part of a Micronaut framework, and this is very cool. Uh, my, uh, 
very cool um, framework for microservices. It was developed by Grails uh, team, and it uh, it is really nice. It uses several uh, JVM languages. Uh, it has very very fast startup time, and even with with Graal VM, you can even have like a 20 millisecond start. So this is very cool. And its killer feature is actually dependency injection because uh, that's why it, it starts so fast. This is one of uh, the reasons it starts so fast. So, um, and let's review it. It uses compile time like Dagger to uh, compile time uh, dependency resolution. And it is really fast. Uh, and also it uses JSR uh, 330. So, uh, you can switch it to another JSR compliant uh, framework. This is very important for us. And uh, also it is very handy and provides uh, clear uh, error handling. So uh, to integrate this uh, library, you just need to add one dependency, one annotation processor, and you can just start using it. So let me show you this on our project. Uh, I have different branch. So I can just check out it. Uh, okay. We can see we need only this micronaut inject dependency and we need to have Maven compiler plugin with um, a processor path added. You see here we have Micronaut Inject Java uh, annotation processor. And actually that's it. Now if you if you take a look at our verticals, we see that customer service is resolved here from the bin context. So we we uh, we ask uh, our Micronaut to provide the bin for this service during construction. And you see there is no more uh, pool creation or connection creation logic here and our customer service methods uh, do, uh, don't uh, accept a connection anymore. So we see uh, parameters list is shorter now. The similar example with customer producer, we have customer service and we, we have it like uh, cleaner here no connections and notification uh, vertical has notifier but it doesn't know which one will be uh, provided right it depends only on this uh, interface customer notifier and it doesn't decide which one uh, we, we should use customer service is shorter now we see no connections here right and we see customer repository is out of wired here we have a constructor here, and even there is no annotation, it will be auto-wired automatically and provided by Micronaut here. And customer repository as well, we have we see this pool, and it will be auto-wired as well using uh, our constructor. So we will use this pool to get connection, and everything looks much cleaner now and much isolated. If you want to test it, you can uh, just create this uh, instance by yourself, provide your market pool, everything you, you need, and you have testable component that is not uh, coupled to some something. Um, okay, let's go back to presentation. So uh, just a quick uh, recap. We have already seen it, but uh, still we, we can now add GSR compatible annotations here. I can even show you uh, quickly. So this singleton is going from Javax inject. So it's not Micronaut specific. So you can switch your implementation, your DI easily. And if it's compatible, it will work without changing your code. So that's a additional benefit. So you see we have singletons, right? You can use name it, it is like prototype. Um, we see our 
pool is created by factory now. The factory is like uh, application config in Spring World, where you, where you have an application config uh, prop, uh, like annotation, and you have bin annotation, right? And you you uh, say that this method will produce bin. So this is the same. We are producing a pool using this method. And we have notifier factory. We uh, create our email notifier, but this code could be like dynamic and we have single place for uh, deciding which implementation to use. So we have factory this, that is created for this. Uh, and refactored code looks like this. Uh, we have pool, we have constructor. Okay, you've seen it before, so probably no need to stop here, but uh, yeah, and additional benefit, each vertical is a composition root, so you can easily as isolate them. So by creating, you see every vertical creates bin context by itself. So actually, what does it mean? Uh, you have a separate bin context per every vertical. So if you have this singleton pool, every vertical will have its own pool. So now you are isolated. And if you need this isolation, you can easily easily have it this, with this one single line of code. Uh, some results after benchmarking. Uh, well, those are not super precise, but I wanted to have like some high-level picture uh, how how slow it is, how how does it impact uh, startup time. So we see uh, plus two hundred milliseconds to startup time. So it's not a big value, uh, and with I, I I started to increase dependencies, and I, I will show you later. Uh, so it doesn't add much to startup time when you have a lot of dependencies, and you have one plus one compiled scope dependency and one annotation processor dependency in your project. So here you can see so startup performance. Uh, how does it change when your dependencies number grows? You see that even with 7,000, you have a little bit more than one second. So this is a really big number of dependencies. So probably you will never have this, this number. And you see that startup performance is not much affected much with this growth. Okay, so let's review our disadvantages that were shown on the on some of the first slides. Uh, we actually, if, if we don't need additional abstraction, we can uh, we can um, skip this abstraction because if you know that there will be only one implementation, you don't need to create additional interface or abstract class. So uh, this disadvantage could could be removed, right? And uh, as we saw uh, with Micronaut, startup performance is impact is really insignificant, so it doesn't affect startup performance much. So we can use it right uh, without worrying much. And as we saw, uh, clean code and all of those benefits are the ones that you can uh, use even in microservice application. So uh, I, I would say that application is not uh, your microservice application uh, can use DI as well. So you, you will have some benefits from using it. And the only one that is left that code is coupled to dependency injection framework. Actually, we are coupled only to uh, this factory uh, code that creates bin, bins. But everything else is JSR uh, compatible, so only bin creation logic is really coupled. So this is the part that should be rewrite, rewritten when you will switch uh, your uh, dependency injection framework. Okay, so let's let's review everything. Let's re review our benefits, and uh, we will see some summary. So the most uh, important benefit is clean code. And uh, as Uncle Bob said, uh, those teams that are, not, uh, that are not worried about clean code are really fast at the beginning, but then 
you can see this slowdown in, in their performance because you know you, you can see even even more on this uh, graphic uh, provided by Martin Fowler. You can see that we have a, a brown uh, line and we have a blue line. So brown one is like uh, when you don't worry much about full code, you can see some uh, boost at your startup, but after some even weeks, you can see that you will start slowing down, right? So it really, uh, worth worse to use clean code and worry about it uh, because you will see some benefits later. With DI makes uh, your code more, more readable and this is actually a good strategy to uh, spend some time writing good code because maintenance uh, costs you really um, bigger amount of money and time so you want to spend a little bit more time writing readable code. Uh, also, from my experience, working with clean code with uh, when you have DI available is really much enjoyable and it boosts your productivity and performance. Because uh, after some time without DI, you will see those singletons and messy code and you are not so happy working with this code and your performance will be will be impacted and uh, the stability as well yeah as we saw uh, DI uh, provides you a cool way to have your components clean and reusable and really testable so it, it's easier to test everything using unit tests and test everything in isolation and the last item is about uh, vertex. Uh, as we saw, uh, you can easily isolate vertical state and um, developers, can, you, you do it only once when you set up your micronaut and your dependencies, and then you, you can even not think about it. So your state is isolated and everything works just uh, fine for your uh, vertex application. Okay, so the summary is really short. So I think that DI really boosts your productivity and actually uh, put in some time into investigation and into introdu introduce, uh, like introducing DI to your code really uh, reduce the cost of uh, your development. Okay, so this is it. Uh, if you have some questions, please go ahead, maybe some feedback. You can even uh, write me personally if you don't want to like uh, provide some feedback now. Uh, in the almost in the end of the presentation, you mentioned that each uh, like uh, bin, uh, mm, I mean each uh, word, uh, something like that, uh, have its uh, own uh, like bin context, and each bin context have its own separate bin. Uh, could you please uh, like? Uh, I don't, I don't understand why it's having benefits uh, comparing to the standard approach when we have one uh, context for the all, like for application. Okay, yeah, yeah. I will explain it. So you mean uh, this one. So every vertical creates yeah. and it uh, gets this thing from from its own bin context. Yeah, so this is only for Vertex, Vertex application and uh, because Vertex uh, says that every vertical should be isolated. You can deploy, uh, every vertical is a unit of deployment. So you will deploy it uh, separately. So you, you don't wanna to have a shared state and they require you to communicate between verticals only using uh, event bus. So you have internal event bus. If you need to communicate to share some data, you should use event bus. And with singleton, it's like a hack. Now you have shared object and you can communicate using this object. And even more, every vertical is uh, running in its own thread. So even Vertex is single-threaded, like almost single-threaded. It uses event loop like Node.js does. So 
but every vertical has its own thread. So if your singleton is not thread safe and you are accessing it from different threads, even without maybe notifying it, without knowing it, you can have some problems with this multi-threaded uh, model. So that's why it's, it's important to isolate it. And it, this is only uh, applicable to Vertex application. Not for other frames. Uh, okay, I got it. Uh, I just uh, like a joint presentation at the, uh, at the end, so that's why I missed that part about vertex and all that stuff. It's only about the vertex. Yeah. Okay, uh, so uh, also a small question. Uh, do like Have you had experience uh, building uh, some small Micronaut applications for some? Not embedded system, but uh, systems with uh, small amount of resources like uh, Raspberry Pi or something like that. No, actually, I have no much experience with Micronaut. I just like uh, use it uh, it for my own test. Mm -hmm. Okay. To see a quick overview, yeah. So. Okay, I see. Thanks. I I have a question uh, about this compile time dependency resolution. Because I can, I can imagine that you can resolve some, I mean, you can inline probably uh, like a straightforward uh, res, uh, dependencies, but if you have a factory and you have a, you know, a factory method, it seems you, you what, what can be done about compile time mm -hmm. resolution in such case. So how, the, how does this compile time resolution works? Mm -hmm. So uh, you see your classes have, uh, has, have, uh, annotations right and uh, with spring uh, when spring starts it scans everything it scans your classes is it uses reflection to see which class is a bin right it should decide that customer repository it, it is a singleton and it uses mysql pool right we should add this we should wrap this together so uh, this, this is done uh, uh, in uh, like the beginning of application at, at the start. With Micronaut or other compile time uh, uh, frameworks, it is uh, pre-compiled. So during your application comp compilation, uh, frameworks decides that this is a single tone. I will put it, this into some structure and then we have everything pre-compiled. So in the start, you have everything. You just should, should like run it. You don't need to scan everything because it was already pre-scanned and pre-built. Pre this is the main like point of, of pre-compiling. Okay, I think I think I somehow get it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, yeah, it's like why I asked if you have some experience uh, building uh, Micronaut applications for small systems like Ra Raspberry Pi because uh, I heard that uh, using Micronaut you can build build very small applications that have very small uh, like footprint and uh, yeah. it doesn't require much resources. I think it's also because of that uh, uh, compile time dependency injection all this stuff. Yeah, it is used for microservices, but uh, yeah, probably for embedded systems like you're talking about, it will be useful as well. Maybe uh, if you don't need such power because Micronaut is really powerful, it provides a very lot of features. Maybe you will find some uh, simpler framework and uh, there is one, something like Quarkus, I think, uh, that is even quicker and even yeah, this one. You can take a look at this one. It is not so powerful as Micronaut and it is new, but it starts really, really, really quick and uses some super magic. Just take a look at, at this, this one as well. Yeah, but, so, thanks. Uh, we'll take a look. Haven't heard about it like, yeah. before. It is a good option as well. Thanks. Uh, could you also like share uh, that project uh, from presentation on GitHub or something like that? Yeah, it is already on GitHub, so uh, the link is uh, inside the presentation. Mm -hmm. Okay. So yeah, you can find it. Thanks.
Okay, do we still have some questions? Yes, no. Sorry? Uh, yes, no questions. Okay. <laughs> okay, then.